Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. That's a picture that I took in my garden on December the 10th, 2017. The level snow depth was around 14 centimetres. Can we expect something like that during the next couple of weeks or not? Well, I'll begin by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The sequence runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 7th, and it's Storm Barra, just centred here over Northern Ireland, which is driving our weather to begin with. It's very, very windy, indeed stormy. Heavy outbreaks of rain are clearing northeastwards. There's snow in the north, particularly over high ground, leading to substantial accumulations and more showery conditions are following from the west. Now, in the short term, it continues to remain very unsettled, but Storm Barra begins to lose its intensity and move away. We then have an Atlantic flow coming across the UK, bringing showers or longer spells of rain at times, also some drier interludes, and by Saturday the 11th, I think one of the things to notice is that areas of low pressure are now tracking further northwards, closer to Iceland. High pressure to the southwest is just beginning to nudge northeastwards, perhaps having more influence in uh, southern parts of Britain at least. And with that general change in the pattern, we will be starting to pull in milder air. So just running the sequence through to its end, that general theme continues to remain in place as we go into the early part of next week, finishing here on Wednesday the 15th of December. It's worth noting at this point, the isobars are once again packed closely together, particularly in the north there, still cold enough for some uh, snow over the Scottish Highlands. But as I say, with those tightly packed isobars, the key thing may well be that it it may well be very windy once again. But I think it's worth taking a look at the jet stream to see how that develops through the first week. Tuesday the 7th, this is Storm Barra, so there's a dip in the jet stream to the south of the UK, therefore we're on its cooler northern side. Moving forwards to Saturday the 11th, by then there are indications of a jet moving northwards. The UK is now, or at least much of the UK, is on its cooler, uh, warmer southern side, sorry. And that general pattern really continues into the middle part of December. Tuesday the 14th here, there's a strong jet stream moving across uh, the Atlantic and pushing eastwards over Scotland. So southern and central Britain are on its milder uh, southern side. I think that, that really shows the transition that looks like taking place quite well during the first week. Details will, of course, vary from computer model run to computer model run, but it's that general movement of the jet stream slightly further northwards, allowing milder air from the southwest to push across at least the southern half of Britain through the middle and second half of this week. So the impact that it has on temperatures well, I'll show several charts here, beginning with Wednesday, the 8th of December, maximums, two metre temperatures, several ones we actually experienced down at the ground level. Single figures across the UK, coolest or coldest still in the north, six, sevens, eights perhaps in the south. Going forwards to Friday, the 10th, still rather chilly, single figures in all regions, only seven Celsius near to the south coast. But then moving forwards to Monday the 13th is quite a big change. 12s, 13s perhaps in southern and central parts of Britain. It's still cooler as you go northwards, but even there temperatures are higher than they have been in the days uh, which preceded this. So milder. Now I think the Mogreps ensemble shows it quite well. This is the chart for London. Um, starting on the 7th of December, going through to the 15th. So here, maximum temperatures on successive days around 5, 6, 7, maybe 8 Celsius. But then from around the 11th, there's a big increase and double figures are being shown by most of the individual runs within the ensemble. So definitely good support for a transition 
to mild weather taking place through the second half of the first week. Rainfall, as I said, it's an Atlantic driven pattern really. So all parts of the UK can expect to see wet conditions at times, but the wettest ones are likely to be in the Northwest. On the left hand side chart, it's showing accumulated rainfall for days naught to five. The one on the right is days naught to 10. What we can see on the left one is that values in southern and central regions and eastern parts of Britain are perhaps 10 to 20 millimetres. And then on the right, they've not increased that much, which suggests that most of the rain in those areas will be falling in days 0 to 5. But if we look up to the northwest, days 0 to 5, 50, 60 millimetres of rain. But then days 0 to 10, Western Scotland, 170 millimetres. So it does look as though um, Atlantic disturbances, disturbances, frontal systems will increasingly be affecting the northwest of UK as we head through the uh, days 5 to 10 period, with them probably weakening as they push south eastwards as high pressure begins to have more influence. But it does look very wet potentially during this period in the northwest. But as I say, with these charts, remember they are just a snapshot from one deterministic model run. Nonetheless, I think they are reasonably representative today of the general pattern. Wind speeds, as I mentioned, are also an issue as we head through the first week. At the very beginning of the forecast period, uh, Storm Barra brings gusts of over 50 miles an hour there, even to, uh, to the London area. Winds tend to decrease through the middle part of the week, but just looking towards the middle of the month there, towards the end of the plot, I think it's worth watching because several of the runs are bringing back very windy conditions. These, this is for Mogreps Ensemble again. Most of the runs are rather windy towards the end, but as I say, there are a few which are going for gusts of over 50 miles per hour once again in the south as we head towards the 14th or 15th of December. So all in all, it's a changeable or unsettled pattern as we go through the first week, at least according to the GFS model run and the MoGreps ensemble. Do the other deterministic models support that general idea? Well, just to recap, here's the GFS, Tuesday the 14th of December, low pressure areas tracking close to Iceland, high pressure from the southwest perhaps, just having some more influence across the southern half of Britain at times. The Canadian model, similar story. The German icon model, very similar once again. Of course, there are differences between these, but the broad scale pattern is similar. The ECM, different across the UK there, but generally high pressure to the southwest, low pressure centered close to Iceland. Finally, the UK Met Office, it's also consistent. Therefore, good agreement towards the end of the first week. Changeable or unsettled, milder, particularly in southern and central regions, possibly windy at times as well. Rain affecting all parts of the UK, but the wettest conditions in the northwest. Weather fronts weakening as they move southeastwards. What about week two? Well, as usual, it's all about the trends and probabilities here, rather than the forecast specifics. Starting with the 16-day GEFS ensemble plot for London and southeastern England. Across the top, it shows forecast upper air temperatures, and the signal here is very clear indeed. Most of the runs are above the thick black line through the period, the thick black line being the 30-year norm, so we've got mild upper level air here. Uh, continuing to be in place over southern Britain throughout the second week. In terms of rainfall, well, not many spikes showing. There are a few. Suggests a lot of dry weather. There will be some rain around, I would expect, if this is correct, as weather fronts move south eastwards, but they weaken due to high pressure. So rainfall amounts probably quite small. The uh, snow row, will it snow? The less said the better, I guess, if you're hoping for snow. 
The maximum value it reaches there is 2 out of 33 right at the very end. Jumping up to Glasgow, upper air temperatures, it's a similar story there through week two, just dipping below the 30 year average at the very end. Rainfall, very wet initially. That fits in with the GFS snapshot rainfall chart that I showed. Somewhere around here, the day's five to 10 period. But later on, there are fewer spikes there from around the 18th to the 22nd of December. It suggests somewhat drier conditions, even in the Northwest. So high pressure quite possibly beginning to be more influential. Snow row, once again, the values are pretty abysmal. The highest being four at the very end. So not much sign of snow there. Of course, with upper, te upper air temperatures well above zero Celsius, those are the upper air temperatures at about 1500 meters above sea level, any precipitation which falls is likely to be, will be rain, not snow. Two meter temperatures, it's very important to look at these as well because at this time of year, if high pressure builds, there can be a big disconnect between upper air temperatures and those we experience at the ground level. So even if we've got warm air aloft, which is looking very likely according to this computer model data, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be mild down at the ground level. So 16 day data table for London. In this case, it does favor mild conditions early on. Light greens are dominant in the columns. These are runs going for six to 10 Celsius. There's also some yellow, those are the very mild runs, 11 to 15 Celsius maximums. But through the second week, particularly towards the end there, there is a cooling trend showing. More dark green appears, it reaches 42% by Tuesday the 21st. Dark green runs which are forecasting maximums of one and between one and five Celsius. So clearly a cooling trend starting to show its hand just as we approach the festive season. I think a lot of people will be keeping a close eye on that. Glasgow, it's a similar story, fairly mild early on, but there's more dark green appearing as we go through the second week. There's even a little bit of blue there, 6%, that equates to two runs in the ensemble, forecasting maximum temperatures of between 0 Celsius and minus eight Celsius. So very cold if those two runs were the ones that turned out to be correct. Of course, because we're only two, it means it's an unlikely solution to say the least. The surface level pressure table for York gives a clear signal also. High pressure dominates through the second week. Essentially, the yellows, oranges, and pinky reds are all indicating for this time of year higher than the average pressure. So it does, it remains that way through the second week, perhaps just towards the end there, the amount of green and blue start to increase. Those are runs going for lower pressure. But all in all, I think the signal here is a strong one. Looking at the postage stamp chart showing forecast pressure patterns on Tuesday the 21st also gives some indication as to how things may develop. I've annotated it just to make it clearer. Each stamp is one of the individual runs within the ensemble and eight out of 31 are going for a continental flow at least of sorts. Potentially those could be rather cold or cold. 14 are going for high pressure, building from the south in general, so some are coming in from the southwest, from the Azores, but on, on those 14, there is generally that drier pattern and the potential for the frost risk to begin increasing. Finally, for a nine of the individual runs, going for a southwest, west or northwesterly pattern across the UK with high pressure sitting further to our south. So I think the signal here again supports that idea of high pressure having more influence. Now the pressure anomaly chart just moving back a few days to uh, Saturday the 18th also supports the same idea. 
The orangey browny shading is indicating a strong positive pressure anomaly across the UK and indeed over much of Europe. You've got to go out into the Atlantic there to find the blue shading and the negative anomaly. Looking at the GEFS mean surface level pressure forecast for Friday the 17th, also indicating high pressure building from the south, more of an Atlantic influence continuing across the north and the northwest of the UK. Finally, the ECM ensemble at the same time. There are differences here, but high pressure may be centered further east, southeast, but it is having influence across the UK with unsettled conditions most likely to continue affecting the northwest, drier elsewhere. So through week two, looking at all that data, aggregating it, clearly the signal is for high pressure to have a good deal of influence, particularly in the southern half of Britain. Temperatures starting off mild, perhaps dipping later on. So to summarize the two weeks, week one, it's a stormy start, and then it really continues to be changeable through the period. Rather cold during the first few days with a frost risk on some nights and hill snow in the north. It then turns milder, particularly in the south. The wettest conditions become increasingly focused on the north and the northwest. Week two, it's a mixed outlook. Wettest in the north, particularly the northwest again. And there could be some rain in the south, but amounts probably will not be great. The reason for that is high pressure is expected to be building from the south. After a mild start, there is a signal for temperatures to begin dipping later on. That could lead to frost and fog becoming more widespread again. So, there we have it. To answer the question that I asked at the beginning, are we likely to see a repeat of the December 2017 snowfall during the next week or two? Well, in lowland southern Britain, I think the answer is a resounding no. There will be some snow in the short term due to Storm Barra, but that's mostly over high ground in the north where significant accumulations are likely. Even there, the snow risk recedes later on. But just to dangle the carrot, there is a sign of it turning colder towards the end of the two-week period as high pressure becomes more influential. And of course, that would be just before the start of the Christmas period. So I hope you found this video enjoyable and useful. If you did, then as ever, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thanks for watching now. Bye.